All right, so the new Canyon Ultimate has been launched. So I thought probably should do a video on this. What does it look like? It looks okay. I mean, you know, it's got some seat, drop seat stays ish. I mean, they're not really dropped, are they? Like they're sort of the from one, you know, in one mold, but they look obviously aren't from the very top. The rest of it, I mean, it looks pretty similar. I'm not gonna lie. Not too many changes. You know, it it, it looks just like a classic lightweight climbing bike with a little bit of optimization for aerodynamics um and then they've got different ranges the cfr is a top one eight grand that is big clx six grand that's ridiculous and to be fair the the cl is is actually like not or sl sorry is not too bad um you can see some of the prices here as well like for what you get but we're going to go through that in a minute they've also got a really lightweight mount which is 17 grams, which is like fair enough, 3D printed, um, can't complain. Don't seem to have really any text on how heavy the frame is, which is always annoying, because uh, I reckon that's pretty important. But anyway, we'll just go through some of the models because uh, the the top of the range ones are absolutely ridiculous. Like, I just couldn't believe they stocked some of this stuff. So they're trying to get the lightest bike. So 6.3 kilos for 10,400. Now that is quite expensive for quite a heavy bike, in my opinion um but like there's actually more we need to go through first so you can see you know it's got a nice carbon seat post but like why has it got pro one tt tires on like come on you can't run time trial tires normally you know it just doesn't work they don't have great grip in the wet often or just grip generally and they wear really quickly so like i just don't get it so if you look at all the components it's got the durace power meter that doesn't work um, and then it's got like DT Swiss wheels, which are fine. Um, and then, you know, there's all the standard stuff, um, which we're not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's got 12 speed DI2, which is nice. That does weigh a lot. You can see here all the weight of the bottom brackets and everything else. But I would say like, I just think it's a bit weird. I like the way they have weight. Like the wheels are fine. Like 1300 grams is just fine. But like, it's not great for 24 mil deep it's really not great i would expect lighter wheels uh to be honest if i was gonna you know if you're buying a ten thousand pound bike and it comes with like these um we'll we'll actually we'll have a google and, and see how much they cost but you would really expect oh they, they're, they're like two grand okay that's obscene okay okay maybe that's okay but i didn't realize they were so expensive but you can get like uh i've seen cheap like lighter ones on aliexpress and it's like that shouldn't be the case like you should be getting for 24 mil like i'm pretty sure the wind space hypers are lighter and deeper than these so like that's the sort of thing i mean like i just don't get it um the tire is a joke like you just can't spec a tt tire on like, I, I like i know it's light they don't actually have the weight of it i know it's light but come on you can't you can't have a TT tire on a road bike. That's just a joke. Like, that's just stupid. Um, the cockpit is really heavy. I'd say that's probably the biggest thing. Like, 440 grams for a cockpit is unbelievable. Um, so that's probably where they lose a lot of weight. That and the discs, obviously. But the thing is, the frames these days, they can get quite light anyway. So the disc isn't a massive issue, often. Um, and then a C59 saddle, like, that is a lot. Um, again, we, we can Google the price on this. But a C59 saddle, I'm pretty sure it's like... 200 and something yeah like 300 quid that's quite a lot um for a saddle so you know is this bike worth 10 grand like not really um even if you wanted to go disc i just think it's just not that like the wheels are just a bit rubbish and like the, the group says the group set but you know if you're buying jury it's like you're a bit of a nutter anyway um and then actually if we go on the cheapest cfr the cheapest cfr i'm pretty sure is just like um uh it's got like a roast power meter which to be fair is decent um but these are all they've only do duos di2 on the cfrs or um or axis um which again is fine to be fair i think this is a bad deal because these get some 353s which are like decently nice like i'd have them but again they come with tt tires which i just don't understand uh if we look at the cheapest one so the frame set alone is five grand which is i think is a lot um i'm not gonna lie uh it comes with oh it comes with durace brakes Okay, that's wild, but fair enough. That's actually not too bad, like, for five grand then. Um, obviously, it's still expensive, but um, does it go on about any of the weights? Because the frame weight would be really interesting to see, but it just doesn't... 
and like, I can't bother to read all the little spiel that they have or watch a video. Like, surely just whack me the um, the frame rate. Yeah, it just doesn't have it, which is which is a shame. But anyway, that's that's not too bad. Um, to be honest, for the the frame and and some breaks. Uh, but yeah, if we go on the cheap ones, the question is, do these also have? So this one you're getting, you also get TT tires. I just don't understand why you get TT tires. It makes no sense. If anyone does know why they're getting giving them you TT tires, please let me know because I just cannot understand it um, at all. Uh, like, like why? Uh, but alas, so components, this one. So basically you just save, I'm pretty sure you've got 12 speed DI2 again. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's just the wheels where here they, there's some, there are different wheels. So I assume they're slightly heavier, um, which is fine. I mean, you know, and you don't get a stupidly light saddle. You don't get like a 60 gram saddle, but again, that's fine. So realistically, like you should probably just buy this model and um and change the wheel set later. CFS LX, this is probably like where people might actually be more interested to buy. It's got four hour power meter, which is a shame. Um actually the left side is okay. Um but yeah, all these come with power meters, which is interesting. Cheapest one six grand, which is force e tap. Again, it's fine. Like it's it's just like meh. It doesn't really like excite me, to be honest, seeing this bike. Um I'm just like, you know, the DT Swiss wheels are okay, but again, they they're not they're not like super exciting, uh, but you can see it comes with power meter and all the rest of it. Uh, but for like 8K, it's, it's a lot. Group set, it's like 1028. Like why, why have a 1028 and a 4835? That would just annoy me. Like the gearing is just stupid. Um, and then the wheels, yeah, they're fine again. Like 1500 grams for a set of wheels is like meh. It is what it is. Um, but for 50 mils, that's like, that's acceptable. And again, the handlebar is super, super heavy which is a shame and because they they use the weird the weird size it's not top but anyway let's actually go to buy that you know maybe more normal people might buy um who have less coin um and don't want to spend like six thousand pounds on a bike so if we look at the cheapest bike they sell which is two thousand two hundred pounds now this will be interesting to see how heavy it is as well so 8.2 kilos well it's not looking great is it 105 um i guess this is old school 105 um which is you know it does the job it's heavy for sure uh you can see some of the weights here yeah so this is 105 i mean this again is decent to be honest um the seat post is like standard um and it doesn't come with any of the integrated bar and stem which is i assume why you're saving quite a lot money what, what does it actually oh it might do um oh yeah i think it does come with integrated bar and stem which is which is fair enough but probably does add some weight to be honest um, but yeah, 8.2 kilos, I mean, it's, it's not great, I'm not going to lie, for two grand. Um, it's not as bad as, like, a uh, an Amanda, but it's not horrendous either. If you look at, like, the top end one, like, you know, again, five grand for this. Again, I don't think that's too bad. Like, it's, it, okay, it's not unreal, but for Ultegra, um, you know, the frame, you know, the, the frame will weigh a little bit more. It won't be the nicest layup and all the rest of it. But seven and a half kilos with discs for that for five grand uh, that seems reasonable to be honest um you know i love to say all bikes are outrageous but some of the stuff canyon make are sort of acceptable to be honest in my views um i don't think they're they're too crazy like obviously the, the price is still expensive but it's not like a complete ripoff and i think some of these bikes again probably like you know for market value it's not a bad option because the cfs lx i feel like is okay it's not the top top one which is the cfr which is like what the pros ride but it basically is the same and six grand for like a pretty decent bike like it's, it's not horrendous like you know you wouldn't need to change anything on this bike except the tires because you can't ride tt tires well let's have a look at this do these come with tt tires because if they do that it's absolutely hilarious there must be some reason why they're coming with tt tires again i still don't understand uh no these just gone con conti gp 5 ks which is fine um but anyway that's my thoughts of the canyon decent bike you know not very exciting to be honest but bikes aren't exciting these days they all look pretty similar would i buy one no uh i don't really see how it's better than my current bike um if i'm gonna buy a bike it'll be an uh, aero bike but yeah it just looks fine um the cfr is ridiculously expensive but that is what it is so anyway, cheers for watching hope you enjoy this quick video and i'll see you in the next one